one space where community can gather and we can celebrate coming together in a circle without disrespecting any of the agencies or entities and still allow people to join our circle in case they are interested. So community space, because the ceremony can happen anywhere. I'll do the formal introduction in case you need to grab it. Mishmin Tuhis, Hanraka Canyon, Coyote Woman, Sayers Roots. I am daughter of tribal chairwoman Anne Marie Sayers of the Indian Canyon Knutson Band of Costanoan Ohlone people. I am co chair of our nonprofit, Costanoan Indian Research, and I am CEO of Canyon Consulting LLC, a consultation firm dedicated to bridging the gap between indigenous and contemporary value systems. I am an educator, I am a student of life, I am a California Indigenous Two Spirit community member here to offer perspective and attempt to be a good ancestor in training. Yeah, thank you, Brita, for coming. One of my friends uh, from the organization um, named Lula from San Benito County invited me, and so um, we thought that it would be a, a beautiful day to kind of just spend it in San Juan Batista, but also acknowledge the contributions of our indigenous people. And what's the importance of, um, of this event and this holiday coming up tomorrow? I think it's, you know, it's really important because all um, Americans, we need, as Americans, we need to acknowledge our history. Um, you know, we've had a lot of accomplishments, but also, you know, throughout history, uh, we've had a lot of challenges. And, um, you know, part of that is acknowledging what we've done to the indigenous people of this country. Um, and, but there's also an opportunity to do repairs and um, continue to, um, in many ways, um, again, acknowledge them by providing them a day of, you know, um, a, a, like a holiday of some sort. And um, just, again, acknowledging um, all their contributions. And what's the message um, that you're walking away with today from this? Just feeling peace. You know, we got a cleansing um, just a few minutes ago, and it's it just, you know, with everything going on with COVID, as communities sometimes, we, you know, we're, we become very divided over issues. And so just coming together in a circle, it kind of reminds us that at, at the end of the day, we're, we're all one people, regardless of our culture, re, uh, you know, religion, um, in our backgrounds, we all experience challenges. And so I hope that, um, at least for me, this is um, you know, a great day to just come together and and really be at peace and uh, thank Mother Earth for all those, all everything that she provides for us, you know, food and um, and also of course, you know, our farm workers, as I mentioned during the circle. Uh, for me, that's uh, something that's very important because these are the people that um, you know toil our, our land and provide for us uh, food so that we can eat and they today. And what's one of your what was your favorite thing about today? Your whether it was dancing, singing, or praying. What was your favorite? Thing? Um, I think just learning about um, you know the history of our indigenous people, um, and also having the opportunity to share um, you know our own experiences and praying for um, for the rain. Uh, obviously, in California, we have a lot of hot weather, and so I think that we all have to take a minute of our day to just call upon the rain and, and um, so that we don't continue to have some of the issues that we've had over the last several years with, you know, climate change and whatnot. Okay, awesome. Is there anything else you want to add? Um, no, I just, you know, I think, um, as again, as we're going through this pandemic, just for us to remember that at the end of the day, um, you know, we're one people and, um, and for us not to forget that. Awesome. Andy Shah Koran, H-S-I-A hyphen. C O R O N. And what is your, what would you say your position title is? Oh, I've been actively involved in Protect San Benito County and in a series of efforts to protect the land and the water and the resources of this county and actually of this region over the, particularly the last eight to ten years. And can you talk to me about um, this event um, in general and the importance of it? Well, you know, this is uh, an effort to call for rain. And we all know that one of the most essential elements, you know, well, it's a compound, I used to be a chemistry teacher, but is water. You know, that water we are feeling more than any other resource in California is the limiting issue. It's not oil, you know, it's not space, it's water. And we're running into these tremendous limits and we've got, you know, we want, of course, our seasonal share of water, but we need to protect what water we have, every drop that lands in our groundwaters, 
the waters of the Salinas Valley depend on, the underground river that every you know that sustains a life and the economy, and uh, and sustains the life of all the other creatures that are out here. And so we've been actively involved for a long time in efforts to make sure that that water is not wasted, is not contaminated, and. Uh, and that's why we're part of this effort. But also we're part of it because the indigenous community has been essential in the efforts to stop things like fracking and to stop development along the highway because they know that once you lose those things, you never get them back. And can you talk to me about the importance of the uh, Indigenous Peoples Day holiday tomorrow? Well, you know, this, we are having lots of battles over history in our countries, but you know, a country that won't face its history and won't embrace all of its history, its high points and its scars and its blemishes, doesn't know who it is and really can't move forward any more than any one of us that don't know who we are can really work off of solid ground and function. I'm a retired teacher and uh, the indigenous history of a place like California is so essential to understand in many ways, you know, we're talking about Indigenous Peoples Day and I grew up in New York where there was Columbus Day celebrations and I understand as um, Canyon Sayers said that every group needs to feel some sense of pride but our pride should not be centered on those who have victimized others and uh, this of all the states is the victimization was some of the most severe. That's why we don't see big Indian reservations, so few of the tribes have land or even have recognition, is because there was an understanding that there was great fortunes to be made in the state and the native peoples were in the way of that. And so they were systematically removed from lands, killed, and, uh, and had their culture stripped away so there would be nobody to push back and have claims on its future. And we need to begin to remedy some of that. And one of the first things one must remedy is not to destroy the places that people consider to be sacred and essential to their identity any more than anybody would want to destroy a place like this, right, exactly. a church, because that, that it's essential to people's identity. My next question is, uh, how do you feel about Biden making, um, declaring this a national holiday now? Well, I, I think that that's a wonderful thing. It's a first step. You know, a day, it's just like what I used to say about Black History Month. Well, we should be understanding Black History all through the year. And, you know, and maybe there's a time for a particular focus. But it's clear that most folks have no sense of the history and the culture of the people. You know, I, I grew up in a state where it still had many, many Native American names. If you go to places like, you know, I grew up on Long Island in New York, and half the towns have Native American names. And you find so few places out here where there are Native American names. First, the Mission period, and then the Gold Rush and the California period, you know, that uh, it's critical for us to begin to revive and educate and it, it doesn't in any way have to come at the expense of other people's sense of pride about their own histories. My name is Amanda Chaff, and it's A-M-A-N-D-A-C-H-A-F-F-I-N. And I'm Jessica Wollander, J-E-S-S-I-C-A-W-O-H-L-A-N-D-E-R. And then can, can you guys talk to me about the importance of this event? Well, we do need rain, and we are living at a time where we see all around us sort of blatant disrespect for water in general, where water is used wantonly for agriculture. When I, I was telling Jessica about seeing, going through fields and they're watering the road, you know. Um, <laughs> it's ridiculous. And, and also I think that because this is indigenous land, you know, the people here, lived here for thousands of years and they they had some droughts they had some trouble but not they didn't treat the water the way we treat it so i think we need to learn and listen about how to treat water and how to how to respect it and i think that if we do that maybe we'll make it yeah we're uh, on stolen land here and it's in territory and so 
but I think on Indigenous Peoples Day especially, it's so important to be honoring the people whose land we're on and learning from them and um, following their example of learning from their traditions. And what's the main message that you hope people take away from um, tomorrow's holiday? Uh, I would say that there are different ways of existing in the world and we have a lot to learn. I too would say that we have a lot to learn and that these people were here. They lived here. They lived on the whole continent, on the co continents, on the Americas. I mean, even the word America is, is a farce. We live in the United States. There isn't a word in English for establishment. So we assume we're the ones. Thank you so much. Lainey Raina, L-A-Y-N-E-E, Raina, is R-E-Y-N-A, means queen in Spanish. Chief Sully Raina, the kind of country yucky. And talk to me about the importance of this event and what you hope for people to take away from it. Well, the importance is that we need rain. Earth is, is a terrible drought. And uh, because we are ceremonial people, we actually are sun dancers. But we, when it's the time to have the rain dance, we call the rain. So we, we brought that here every Sunday so far. We had a good group today, a good circle. Pray, we pray and dance for rain. And what else I could say, I don't know. You want to talk? Can you come a little closer, please? Sorry. Yes. Can you talk about the importance of today? The importance of today is that we remember our ancestors. And it's, it's because of our ancestors who passed to us the magic magic, of love, of creation, the seasons, and especially in the native cultures of the world, the incredible power that the women bring into the human race. Without mom, we, we couldn't be here. And, 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 and that's, that is it great emphasis on uh, to honor our moms, to honor our sisters, to honor all, all the women in the world. And when that comes together, peace, peace will come. And, and Mother Earth is feminine. Yes. And uh, she gives us life. Okay. And can you talk to me about the importance of tomorrow's holiday and um, what you hope people learn? Some may be misinformed, some may not have enough knowledge or education on this important holiday. So years ago, before anybody even thought about it, we had uh, proposed to have uh, an Indigenous Peoples Day. So finally, we're having and it is to bring attention to people of color. And we are all people of color, maybe not uh, different shapes, but we are people of color who um, dance and pray. We are, we're ceremonial people, we're different. We're not the run of the mill, mill people. Um, I was uh, a certified surgical technician in the operating room and I was a medic during the war. So I saw a lot of death and dying, and it, I had terrible PTSD, but now I'm fine. And uh, so we, I met my husband years ago, and we went to Sundance in South Dakota and had all these special ceremonies to just to be good and to be kind and to be peaceful people. And can you talk to me about the uh, people knowing the truth of um, the history 
about this? Well, I'm from New England. I'm from Connecticut. And uh, we are the people of the first light. And uh, we knew our history. And uh, however, it was taught that Columbus came and touched the, our, our place first. But that's not true. So the history has to be uh, rearranged to be truth. And, uh, There's a place where the Vikings were here first. From, yeah. So people should, uh, it would be good if people would look it up and uh, learn more. Uh, we don't denigrate Columbus. He did what he had to do, but he did not come here first. There were other people. There was, uh, what was his name? I can't remember his name. Uh, but anyway, it was. Uh, Magellan and people that came to North Carolina and those North Carolina peoples are mixed blood with uh, the, uh, the first uh, navigators. Yeah, but um, yeah, so my people are from the Wampanoag, Mohican, Pequot. Uh, my family's from Mystic, Connecticut. And I wrote a story about the terrible slaughter of the mystic native peoples. And, uh, so I, I, I've published four books now. But that book is, um, is very good. So people need to read more. You know, I mean, it's nice to have days where you can watch TV and all that stuff. But you have to start learning because we are, uh, we, we have to. We teach a lot. We've had many, many years of teaching people. Now we're retired. Okay, great. Is there anything else you guys want to say? Well, the, the, the entire human race has magical roots. And the magic comes through the women, because Mama gave birth to us. And so she's she's the goddess. And, 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 and when we embrace all of them, when, when we embrace all of them, then then it's complete. That it, it is not a world of men. It is a world of moms. The mother of Earth is the mother. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much. My name is Nina Santa Cruz. That's A I D A N and S A N T A. Space C R U Z. My name is Layla Diaz. L A Y L A D I A S. And can you guys talk to me about the importance of this day and tomorrow's holiday? Um, for me, the importance of today is community gathering and to pray for rain. Um, I think if humans had to go as long as the earth without water, you know, we'd, we'd all be dead by now. And so um, it's, it's inspiring to see community members, both native and non native people, coming out here to pray for rain and pray for water. And, uh, oh, and for tomorrow, too. Tomorrow is a very exciting day. Um, and uh, I don't really know what to say about it. Um, I'm just excited for tomorrow. I'm excited to go to Sand City and celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day with plenty of Indigenous people. And, uh, and excited that it is a federally recognized holiday and, and that we're, you know, sort of pushing Christopher Columbus to the side <laughs> and, and recognizing that Indigenous people have always been here. Yeah, I, I really believe that the only way for the community as a whole to survive the impacts of climate change is we have to adopt the practices of indigenous peoples and to respect the earth. And coming here today really helps me hope it does make me feel more part of the local community and more part of the earth. And you know, the holiday tomorrow, 
signifies, I think, every year it's a step forward in national awareness for this holiday. And I think more and more people are going to understand the importance of celebrating indigenous people who still all around are, are around today. What do you think about the um, the importance of this holiday? That it brings out the truth of the history. I think that isn't hasn't always been possible. Well. So you know, a lot of um, people think yes, that it's all about the like you said, but. And it's not often talked about about the natives that were here first. I think that how do you think this um, holiday brings out the truth in history and is bringing awareness of history? I think it just helps to bring awareness that indigenous people are still here today and that we can learn from how they lived in balance with nature for thousands of years before contact with colonizers like this and that we need to start a conversation with the rest of the country to really reach out with all the indigenous people because they're everywhere across this entire country. Almost every piece of land had indigenous occupiers at some point in history. And so if people are aware of that, then they can take the first steps themselves to reach out to those communities. Awesome. Is there anything else you guys want to add? Yeah, I'd, I'd say that um, Indigenous People's Day sparks a conversation. Um, just having Indigenous People's Day by itself um, doesn't necessarily bring awareness to the history here, but it definitely sparks a conversation. And um, something that um, I think her name is Colleen over there said to me that I, I very much agree with is that the tribes can't heal until the perpetrators heal. And healing is going to take both, it's going to take effort from both sides. Um, and so I think yeah, indigenous people say, you know, starts that conversation and it, it begins the process of healing. Awesome. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Coming together to join a circle.
Lisa Snooty and myself that we actually took the time to go into City Hall and to get it acknowledged by San Juan Batista. So San Juan Batista actually acknowledges Indigenous Peoples Day as a legitimate holiday on its city calendar. So we did that a few years ago. So I want, I want that to be acknowledged for one. We all know in 1492, we all know who sailed the ocean blue. Do we know who he ran into? And do we know the language that they spoke? Did you know that he didn't even touch the Americas? I don't want to disrespect people of many nations. I respect our Italian-American community members. There does deserve to be an Italian community member that should be highlighted for the amazing accolades. I don't want to separate our communities from celebrating these occurrences, but we should honor truth in history. So right here, right now, we are gathered in Mutsun Ohlone territory. Can I hear you say Mutsun? Mutsun. Can I? And I now this is the part where it's going to be language sharing. Can I hear you say Ama Pite Takawas? Ama Pite Takawas. Ama Pite Takawas means people of this land in the Mutsun language. So right here, right now, we are in community as people of this land. You're speaking in the indigenous language of this land. Before English was spoken, before Spanish was spoken, the first language of this land is Mutsun, and you just said people of this land. And right here, right now, we are acknowledging indigenous protocol, meaning we are becoming familiar with the native peoples of whose land we are on. So it's so very important that we recognize indigenous protocol. Everywhere we go, we are on stolen land. Everywhere we go, we should take the time to become familiar with the indigenous peoples the histories of these spaces and places in today's post-colonial settler environment. I'm not trying to point this out as a form of guilt tripping. I'm not trying to point this out to talk about the pain and atrocious crimes of the past. I'm trying to say we are in community together. We can go forward in a good way and we can all be good stewards of the land and good ancestors in training. So are you a good ancestor in training? Yes. yes. Oh, you can hear me, can I hear you say? Oh.
Let's sing to the hummingbirds and the pollinators. Say the word Humunya. Humunya.
Look at, here I am in community with you, offering my voice and my perspective. I have a few educational materials to offer in conversation, and we do have other community members who represent how we are in community together taking care of the lands that we call home. So thank you for coming and joining us.
spirit to keep us strong and for Mother Nature to drench us with the valuable water, the delicious, tasty water. I'm Jim. I live across the highway. They grow the redwood trees. They're thirsty. We need rain. So happy to see the young children here. We're trying to make the world we can leave for you to be a better place. We've made mistakes. We can correct them. My name is Andy. I live in Aromas, and every day I walk the hills, and they're dry, and the world feels asleep. And I'm waiting anxiously for the rain to come and for the world to wake back up again and for us all to enjoy that. Thank you. Uh, my name is Wes. I live in Salinas, uh, but also Seattle and uh, the Puget Sound area, the Humboldt County area, they get a lot of rain over half the year, they get rain. And that's what I pray today for this area, for the whole state. Make it rain. My name is Soren and uh, I pray for rain and water. Sunshine and agriculture. 
destroying our San Juan Valley with a four-lane freeway, destroying our land over here on the west side. Also, I pray for rain. I pray for people to rise up and vote and get things done for the people here, not Sacramento. God bless us all. Oh.
song in a good way. This song came to me differently than it was taught. This is a grandmother's song to honor our grandmothers, their grandmothers, and an all mother her. So without them, without her, we would not be here. We share this time and space together for a reason. So that this song is a fair song. Hey, I don't know if you want me to start. Get over there. I don't know if folks can hear me or not. Okay, good. This county has been ground zero in fights to protect the water. Starting back in 2014, when we were the first county in California that banned fracking. The oil companies wanted to put thousands of oil wells down by the national park. And this county rose up after being outspent by, you know, 20 to 1 to uh, reject with almost 60% of the vote the oil drilling down there. And we set the stage for counties all over to begin to push back on the uh, petroleum drilling. That same group has tried to push back out of the, against the out of control growth along the sacred corridor along 101 from South Santa Clara County down through the rocks and all the way to the Monterey County line along 101. That area is where the rivers come together. The San Lorenzo, the San Benito uh, have their confluence at, one, at Highway 129 and then Carneros Creek along the base of the rocks goes off to Elkhorn Slough. It's one of the most important wildlife corridors in the state, and it's for good reason that the Amamutsen and, and many others see this as the, the place where the world began. And we fought very hard, the community, to stop um, the ideas of turning all the on and off ramps into a string of developments and shopping centers. And three, Twice it's been brought to the people to vote on this in this county. The, uh, 
The uh, Native Americans play pivotal roles in hosting meetings, educating, and talking about the impact on their communities. Lots of ceremonies were done where the people got out and voted twice in spite of all the pressure from our neighbors to the north, from Silicon Valley, to make this the next major area of sprawl. Our county has rejected over and over again the idea of these sacred areas, these important wildlife corridors, these waterways to be developed. And yet, after each time our county votes for our county supervisors come back in and attempt to try to enable the development. They don't really care what the people of the county have said. And that's going on now at Betabel Road. Some of you may have seen flyers by the developer thanking us all for supporting his project, even though we voted against it. Oh, you know, even though he spent fortune trying to persuade us it was the right thing to do, we voted no, and not, so he not, not, not only wants to take the land and despoil it, he wants to take away the truth about our history in this county that we said no to these things. He wants to turn that around with a flyer and he thinks we'll be fooled by that. But the people are coming together again. We need support because the county, you should go up to Betabel Road and look at this uh, Ryder McDowell, the one who owns that property under the artifice that is our ownership system, that he has basically, under the pretext of doing agricultural development, has started major earth moving, laid foundations, framing up, saying that there's somehow going to be a fruit stand or something, but there's no farm there. So people, we're going to need your help. The Amamutsin need your help to push back on this, to protect those sacred area. That's part of Eurostock where they believe the world began, the center of, you know, of their whole existence as a people. And this whole area is too important, too beautiful for both. It's the major wildlife corridor between the Santa Cruz Mountains and the Gavilan Mountains. And so for so many reasons people have understood it should not be turned into a string of horrible shopping centers and schlocky tourist attractions where they claim that they're respecting the history of the people. When they, they we had meetings with Val Lopez, the chair of the group, the tribal group, and the county promised to engage in discussions about and, and do a study and survey and impact it, and they did not fulfill that promise, it's like so many broken promises, and they've gone ahead and allowed them to do these developments. So there's gonna be a pushback because we believe the people of this county, for many reasons, no longer have faith that the folks who are elected to de make these decisions can be allowed to make them anymore. In other counties in the state, Napa, Sonoma, Ventura, the people took away that right from the elected officials and made it so no major redevelopment, no major rezoning would happen without the people voting for it. And we think that that is probably the remedy that we need in this county because they don't hear us. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Mary, you have anything you want to add to that? No, too busy. After petitions, please signing. make sure you sign up because we're going to need to reach folks. Because just like before, it took people collecting signatures, talking to people. We didn't have the money for you know a huge campaign and loads of mailers and advertisements, but we're going to win anyway. Thank you.